the first time I met him. The first thing he said was, I'm not warm and fuzzy, but he was charming and lovely. I was impressed. I'm here as a physician, as a scientist, as a public servant, in an effort to illuminate the terms of the debate, to offer an objective view about the science, and I hope I've contributed to that. Thank you, Dr. Spiegel, Dr. Frank. I heard him give a talk. I said, boy, this guy is very intense, he's very intelligent, and he's gonna be a mover and shaker. The thing I love about Alan is you could be sitting around talking about anything, a movie, a book, and he knows everything there is to know about it. I don't even want to know what his IQ is. It's off the charts. My first passion was learning in all forms. My parents, they really instilled in me the value of hard work, respect for others, the need to make a contribution, to lead a purposeful life. My parents were both from Lodz, the second largest city in Poland, and they had the misfortune, of course, of uh, being Holocaust survivors. They and what remained of their family, those who weren't already dying of starvation during the ghetto period, ended up in Auschwitz. After the war, they each found their way back to Lodz, realizing that was the only way of reconnecting, essentially almost the sole survivors of their respective families. My father had the prescience to realize that he needed to get back to the American zone. And so we ended up back in what is Bavaria, in a displaced persons camp, where I was born in May of 1946. For my parents, my birth was a reaffirmation of life and a determination to make a new life, in this case, in the US, where they were able to emigrate when I was three in 1949 to Manhattan, where we lived for the first several years. A very early formative experience was the National Science Foundation launching a series of programs for high school students to get them more involved in science. So after my junior year in high school, in the summer of 1962, I would commute by subway all the way from Brooklyn to the Bronx to this campus, to the Forsheimer Building, doing research in a pathology lab which for me was very exciting and really gave me positive motivation to continue and to become what we now call a physician scientist. I came to the NIH, the National Institutes of Health, in 1973. It was an opportunity really to learn and to grow. In 1999, he was asked to step in as the director of NIDDK. I would consider Dr. Spiegel to be a textbook definition of a high performance leader. He set a high standard and he led by example. And just to illustrate briefly, a particular missense mutation identified here in the N-terminal sequence of the receptor turned out to be a rare polymorphism. Alan was a mentor to many of us uh, coming of scientific age during that time. He impressed upon us objectivity and thinking outside the box. Classic Alan Spiegel pose that I remember so well would be watching the last steps of a Western blot. And I remember just seeing Alan huddled over the bench, waiting for these spots to develop, eager to find out what answers the experiment would yield. His excitement was infectious and caught us all up in the excitement of science. When I first learned that Dr. Spiegel had accepted the position at Albert Einstein, I think that he was really born for that job. I mean, there were other very excellent candidates, but he was the right person at the right time. In the 34 years that I was there, there were five different deans. Under each dean, it was a little bit different, but then there was Alan. Alan came in with a strong vision of what Einstein could be. He had a mission, and the mission was to make Einstein greater. Under Allen's leadership, the Einstein campus is transformed. Shortly after he joined, the Price Block Research Building was completed. Magnificent building, won architectural awards. There were new spaces created, and the renovations in all the buildings really made a huge difference. The morale of the school was lifted. He picked great people. He had an eye for talent. He appointed me as the chair of neuroscience, and I have really often reached out to him for advice. His greatest and most lasting legacy will be the merger with Montefiore. To have them together is a huge drawing card for the finest professionals, the finest doctors to come, fruitful for grants, for programs, 
Alan had the skills to make this transition work. Einstein is ranked seventh in the nation in National Institute of Health NIH funding per investigator. $1.8 billion in NIH funding over his tenure and $500 million in philanthropy. Now that's a record that any dean would be proud to have. To be a successful dean, one has to really relish and be committed to the success of others. What has been most gratifying is to see many of those outstanding research accomplishments of our faculty, which really have had an impact on human health. The fact that we'll, by the end of my deanship, have graduated 12 classes of outstanding students who will join the ranks of alumni who've made so many contributions in research, in academic medicine, and in practice. If I could envision a future Montefiore Einstein five to 10 years from now, it would be a thriving community with even more outstanding scientists, clinicians, and really improving the health not only of the Bronx, but of the city, of the country, and the world. If there's a single lesson I've learned, it's that being a dean is a tough job. <laughs> but I have no qualms or regrets. I'm glad that I had the privilege and opportunity to do this.